Hello and nice to see you. Today we will make the fourth orchestral texture by applying the underlay and overlay variant of the spread method. I will show you how to add a four part harmony below and above the one part device. If I spread the harmony above the original melody, which is in the C major, it will be in a very high register. In this case, I can use a three or two part harmony instead of a four part. The second way is to transpose the melody down. By this way, I will get a white space above the melody. Transpose is more effective for using soft registers of instruments. I still use the first device chart for this. The second chart will be explained in future lectures and you will learn the best combinations of the very low, low and medium registers. So, here are the following possible devices. I get through this process quickly since we have already learned about it. I will make a one part device in G4. So, here's my device. Four French horns, an English horn, violas, and cellos. You can ask me why did you choose the violas and cellos instead of the violins? Now, let's compare this melody on the horns with different departments of the string section. For example, If I double the horns with the first and second violins in unison, then they will thicken the horn timbre, because the melody will be played on the bottom two strings of violins, G and D. These strings are thick than A and the E strings. Thus, the unison doubling of the lower strings of violins and the middle register of the horns serves to expand the thickness of the melody, as well as to change the tone color. What about the violas? If I double the horns with the violas, the melody will be on two middle strings, G and D. The middle strings are not thick as the lower ones. Hence, violas will thicken the sound a little bit. However, it will change the tone colors of the horns. Let's compare the cellos. The middle register of the horn corresponds to the first A string of the cello. This string has a thinner and a piercing quality due to its size. Accordingly, the unison doubling of the high string of cellos with the middle register of horns serves just to change the tone color, not to expand the thickness and the power of the horn. It looks like you are adding another circle to an existing one. This combination is useful just to change the tone color. So, in conclusion. The lower strings are best suited to expand the thickness as well as the tone color. The high strings are used just to change the tone color of the existing timbre, not to expand the thickness. Now, let's back to our device. I used mixed timbres. Here the ratio of the instruments is approximated as follows 1, 8, and 4. As you can see, I didn't balance the wind, brass, and string groups. Thus, here the French horns are dominant due to their strong and thick registers. They also stand out with the number of players. The English horn has a thinner timbre than a single French horn. It will be very weak within the four French horns. It looks like you are adding 
red circle to the thick purple circles. Cellos have a more subtle tambour as they will be played on the first A string. Violas are on their two medium strings and will be a bit soft than cellos. But generally, the string section will be heard within the orchestra due to their thin tambours. Because when thick and warm tambours are combined with thin and cold tambours, they sound alone and as unrelated. Thick tambours cannot absorb thin ones. This means that violas and cellos are used not to thicken the horn timbre, but to achieve a new tone color. Both lines will be sounded individually, because they are played in different registers of the instruments. The tempo is quarter equal to 120. All instruments are in the mezzo piano. So I made the device I wanted. Let's listen to the result. We can make the texture since the melodic device is down. There is a white space below and above the melody to spread the harmony. Let's start with the underlay. I will apply the close four part harmony using two bassoons, one bass clarinet and one contrabassoon. This is a 3 plus 1 combination of the low woodwinds. If you haven't the information about this topic, please check the lecture 6a, close 4 part harmony, woodwind in threes. So, let's start. The first chord is G major. The low note of the chord will be played on the contrabassoon, while the bass clarinet will be above it. Two bassoons take the top two notes. The contrabassoon sounds an octave lower than rhythm, even in the C score. As you can see, I spread harmony under the horns. This is a nicely balanced close four part voicing, because all instruments are in their second soft registers. They work well at any dynamics from pianissimo to forte. However, I will use the same dynamic mezzo piano as on the melody, because I want to hear the harmony as well as the four horns. The next chord is the C major. In the bassoon pass, the G remains unchanged, while other tones resolve to the closest one. The following bar is in the G major. The G will be kept unchanged. The contrabassoon goes to up to G, while the bass clarinet and the first bassoon resolve to the closest tone. Then, the top D moves down to B. In the next bar, the bass clarinet remains unchanged. The contrabassoon goes down to D, while the two bassoons move to the closest ones. The next bars, fifths and sixths, are similar to the first and second bars. Hence, I will copy the same harmony there. The last chord is D major. There is no common tone and I will resolve all tones to the closest ones. In order to produce clear harmonic unity with the horns, I present this chord with warm timbres. Of course, depending on your taste or musical context, you can use any combination, such as two bassoons with two clarinets, one bass clarinet with two clarinets, and so on. Just be aware of which tone color will be dominant in the harmony. Hot, warm, or cold. That's why you should know the code voicing techniques. Thus, we applied the spread method in the woodwind section. Let's check how it will sound.
the contrabasses will be doubled with the contrabasso. This is a bass line of harmony. I'm adding a pizzicato marking above the stuff. Generally, short and boomy sounds are well blended with long sustained notes, like the contrabass pizzicato with contrabasso, or contrabass pizzicato with the cellos. The next step is to spread the harmony over the melody. So let's start. I'm going to voice the close four part harmony within the high strings. I will use the divisi technique as it's more compatible with this texture. However, the harmony can be voiced with double or triple stops. Thus, I will spread harmony above the violas. The B and D are on the second violins, while the G and the B are on the first violins. Should be marked with divisive marking. The dynamic markings can be the same or less than the melody. But don't write strong dynamics like mezzo forte or forte as high instruments easily absorb the harmonics of the lower ones. The next chord is C major. I kept the common sound to get a soft transition between both chords. This is most important. Otherwise, the high part will be dominant and our ear will focus on it instead of the melody. The next part is again the G major. Then the harmony goes to the D major. The following bars are the same as the first and the second bars. The top note of the last chord can be either A or D, but for getting a little climax, I can add the D after the B and C. So we already constructed the texture. Now let's add a non-essential element, the heart. Since we have already learned how to add the pedal diagram, I'm gonna move to path writing. I want to add several part harmony in the middle register. If I place it in the higher register, then it will dominate due to its plaque and piercing timbre. As I said, I don't need a distinct harmony above the melody. The wavy lines indicate that the notes should be played as an arpeggio, not simultaneously. It doesn't matter how the chord is placed vertically, the player will choose comfortable fingerings. I'm writing the same dynamics as on the woodwinds and strings. So, we applied the underlay and overlay method in this texture. Finally, the warm timbers are used in the low part harmony below the horns, while the cold timbers are in the high register above the violas and cellos. Let's listen to the harmony, then all together. So we have done the fourth texture. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.
Thank you.